This is the voice of health, sharing health principles, inspiring healthful living because a healthy lifestyle is medicine. Broadcasting every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 11 a.m. Brought to you by the Lifestyle Medicine Team of Adventist Medical Center Manila, Health Ministries Department of North Philippine Union Conference, Adventist World Radio, and Hope Channel Philippines. This is the Voice of Health. Ora sa paglaom, alas 11 ang takma sang aga. Welcome mga kapaglaom diri sa The Voice of Health. Trumpeting Heaven's Prescription that Lifestyle is Medicine. Live kita diri sa Hope Channel Bacolod and subong man sa Gisa Channel 37, Digital Receiver Channel 45, kag sa Facebook pages sang Hope Channel North Philippines, Adventist Medical Center Manila, Adventist Medical Center Bacolod, Hope Channel Bacolod, kag subong man sa AWR 360 Teleradio Luzon area, Adventist Hope Radio Toledo Cebu, Big Time FM 95.5 Kalbayog City Samar. Sa oras ang alas 12 tubto, balauna matanaw kita sa DWBL 1242 kilohertz teleradio. So sa liwat ginawelcome ko kami mga kapaglaom ako inyong makaupod sa bunga aga ako si kapaglaom Rachel. Sa pagpadayon sa aton programa ginainvite ko kami tanan sa pagdoko sa inyong ulo para sa aton ng opening prayer. Let us pray. Our great God, Father in heaven, we praise you and thank you, dear Father, for another opportunity that you have given us to share the gospel about health to our viewers. And to the community, we pray for your Holy Spirit to be in the midst of us, especially to our speaker, together with our technical staff, and to all of our viewers. Father, may this message will be a blessing to each one of us. Thank you for loving us just as we are, for forgiving our sins, and for accepting us just as we are. This we pray in your name. Amen. So, saliwat. Happy morning mga kapaglaom. Ginagirit ko no, ang aton mga kapaglaom dira sa Medical Arts Building sa Adventist Medical Center Bacolod. Aton mga patients, watchers, and mga friends, colleagues na tanda sa BAMC. Happy morning and happy Wednesday mga kapaglaom. And sa aton mga regular nga viewers sa Facebook and sa Uh, National TV, happy morning, kag happy Wednesday. Salamat sa pag-tune in sa aton nga episode subong nga aga. And if may ara ka mga comments, suggestions, or questions regarding sa aton nga message or sa aton topic subong nga aga, pwede ka muka ka leave sa inyo nga comments sa aton nga comment section sa Facebook page. Okay? So, aton nga topic subong nga aga, mga kapaglaw, may kita very interesting. Um, kamu awang balag uh, experience nga nabudlayan, kamu magtulog or hindi takatulog, no? Ina siya, isa na siya ka mga probably symptoms sang aton nga ginatawag nga insomnia. So our topic this morning is about insomnia. Aton paghihibaluan kung ano ang mga causes sini, no? Mga paglaom, anong symptoms? Paano natin ma-improve ang aton nga pagtulog? So, i-elaborate na later sang aton nga speaker. And ano ang mga consequences sang insomnia? And sa ato no for our for the information of everyone no ang insomnia is a common sleep sleep disorder no that can make each one of us or kamo nga mga naka-experience ni nga mabudlayan kita sa pagtulog so kung interested kamo sa aton nga topic subong nga aga please stay tuned sa pagbalik naton aton na pagastoryahan okay so please stay tuned mga paglaom the voice of health will be right back Welcome to the home of eye care, Adventist Medical Center, Bacolod. In everything that we do and in every word that we say and in all our patient encounters, it is imperative to seek God first. Recognizing God and His supremacy above the intelligence of men. We acknowledge Jesus Christ as our greatest physician, who is the source of divine healing. In Adventist Medical Center, Bacolod, we strongly believe that we are God's instruments in extending His healing ministry to everyone. From the food that we serve to our clients, 
to the intricate and complex procedures and services that we render to our patients. We value and emphasize the importance of extending Christ. We offer our services through eye care, a patient-centered approach where the word care stands for compassionate, accountable, respectful, and enthusiastic as we address the needs of our patients, as we prescribe their medications, and as we perform procedures using the state-of-the-art medical equipment to extend Christ's healing ministry to everyone. Because in Adventist Medical Center, Bacolod, we care and God heals. For healthcare needs such as executive checkup and annual physical exam, visit us at Adventist Medical Center, Bacolod, C.B. Ramos Avenue, Takoling, Bacolod City. Call us at telephone number 488-7777 or email us at info at adventisthealth-bcd.com or DM us at our official Facebook page at Adventist Medical Center, Bacolod. For your healthy meal options, visit us at Nutribites Cafeteria, located at the West Wing ground floor of Adventist Medical Center Bacolod. Available for delivery via Food Panda. You may also visit us at Fruits and Bites, located at the ground floor of the new Simplicio Palanca Medical Arts Building of Adventist Medical Center Bacolod. We are happy to bring you our Bamsi Happy Card, Hospital Affiliation Privilege Incentive Program for our loyal patients. Discounted hospital services for our card holders, plus the additional perks of discount privileges up to 30% with our partnered companies. For more information, please contact us at 034 488 7777, local 335, cell phone number 0921 299 2122. You may email us at marketing at adventisthealth-bcd.com. Are you suffering from heart disease, diabetes, hypertension, obesity, stroke, anxiety, and other lifestyle diseases? We can help you. Join our Lifestyle is Medicine Intervention Program. This is a six-week virtual health program, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 to 8 p.m. that will bring your lifestyle doctors and dietitians right where you are. There will be scientific evidence-based lectures, health screening, cooking demonstrations, workbook and recipes that will help you in your health journey. Find out what is the optimal nutrition for your health conditions and activities fit for you. This holistic lifestyle intervention program will help you and your family to experience the best life in the midst of uncertainty and stressful living. Contact us at Adventist Med Lifestyle Medicine Facebook page for details and registration. Join now! Welcome back to The Voice of Health, mga kapaglaom. Live kita gihapon dari sa Hope Channel, Bacolod. And nagabot na kita sa aton nga time para introduce ang aton nga speaker sa bunga aga. So our speaker is one of the founders ng Move Institute of Natural Doctor International Corporation. She is a fellow sa American Academy of Anti-Aging and Restorative Medicine. She is also a fellow of American Association of Integrative Medicine. And she graduated her Master's on Hospital Management and Master's on Business Administration at Jose Rizal University. She is a diplomat of Philippine College of Lifestyle Medicine and one of the internal medicine doctor at Manila Sanitarium and Hospital. We are privileged to have in our meets, Dr. Vigilanda M. Solihon to talk about her topic about insomnia. Hi, it's nice to visit this channel again. I'll talk of something that's very, 
very common in every population in the world, and that is insomnia. Of course, insomnia is a condition where people have a hard time sleeping, whether they have delayed sleeping time, or they have short duration of sleep, or there are intermittent awakenings, or early awakening, and having difficulty of going back to sleep. Let me jump into the causes and consequences very quickly for this particular time of our discussion. Let me give the credit to the University of Michigan. And of course, I'd like to give credit to especially to Dr. Chris Drake. I borrowed her sli his slides. Okay, what are the causes? Number one is stress. Stress, stress, stress. It affects the formation of our brain cells, especially the chronic stress. The other is early family conflict. It predicts later insomnia in life. Early. So you see, I like parents to think along this line. When our children are still growing up, if there are conflicts in the house, conflicts of values, conflicts of the way parents deal with them, conflicts in principles, and even conflicts in themselves, it will later on in life precipitate into insomnia. Now, how will we know this? Well, we need to spend time with our children. And once we are so busy doing something else other than spending time with our children, then we don't know our children and we're not able to help them. That they already have conflicts in themselves because of the family situation. Here are reports in here. If there's the odds ratio for insomnia at age 20, okay. There are reports of high family conflict in seven to 15 years old. And the more conflicts there are, the greater is the tendency. So look, just three family conflicts will give them about 2.5% more probability of having insomnia. How about prior to the onset of this disorder, what are the other vulnerability or could we even detect those? Yes, there are, there are predispositions to this. Premorbid, the acute and chronic, we have predisposition to this. In other words, for example, there are certain persons, like person A here, even before the conflict, they already have the tendency for insomnia, while person B here, has very minimal premorbid tendency to have insomnia. There are tests to do that, and then so we could predict actually. Now, there are physiologic arousal in insomnia as part of the causes. We have increased metabolic rate. So people who, who have fast metabolic rates they feel hot, they may have insomnia, or those people who have insomnia may have increased metabolic rate as a bi-directional thing. Increased body temperature, the multifactorial sleep latency is increased as well. In other words, you're already in bed, 
to the time of the onset of your sleep, this is called sleep latency, that is increased. We also have increased sympathetic activity or high frequency or low frequency ratio. With, with high sympathetic activity in the body, then the blood pressure is high, heart rate is high, the respiratory rate is high, the muscles are tense. Those are signs of high sympathetic activity and they're very much associated with insomnia. And so with increased catecholamines, what are catecholamines? These are the norepinephrine, the epinephrine, sympath sympathetics. There's also the increased high frequency of EEG. And these are very much related to our end with insomnia. The 24 hour cortisol secretion is high in insomniacs and you know that cortisol is a stress hormone, right? The higher the cortisol hormone, the more tendency there is, or the greater tendency there is to have insomnia. Here is the table that shows the higher the catecholamines, the higher is the tendency for insomnia. Hypermetabolism. We mentioned that earlier, right? Now, what are the consequences of insomnia? Again, I borrowed this from Dr. Chris Drake. Consequences of sleep loss or insomnia, you have the physical health, you know, you feel lousy, you feel sick, weak. Then our safety, and we'll talk more a little more about this in a little while. Even the learning, the cognitive, if you remember some time back, I talked about memory and learning in, in relation to sleep. Workplace, more error, mood and performance, irritability is high or depression maybe, and very poor performance. Mental health, so much related to it. Again, depression is associated with mood and also with mental health. The higher the incidence of insomnia, the more prone the person is to have psychiatric disorders. And of course, the family relationships are affected. While it's true, we accept the what our fellow men had been saying, magbiru ka na sa lasing, wag lang sa bagong gising, right? But you know, mas mabuti pa yung bagong gising sa hindi nakakatulong. Because really, the mood and the relationships are... Imagine both parents Insomnia, hyper irritable, of course. What will happen to their relationship in the family? You tell me. Now, on the other hand, sleep deprivation is, could be associated with decreased cortical activity as well. Um, meaning cortical, meaning the area in the brain here in the cortex which is the seat of judgment which is the seat of our the area where our decision making is located and even the wakefulness as well it is decreased with sleep deprivation now there is a gene in here that is associated with patients with insomnia and other chronic diseases, having this SF36 or HRQOL, we have this, the physical function, we have the role of physical, the pain, general health, vitality, the social health, emotional role, and the mental health, they are all affected. Some are severe. 
Some are associated with congestive heart failure, and some here are even associated with depression, as we have mentioned. Absenteeism. What is absenteeism? Well, they may be present physically, but they are not productive in the workplace. Insomniacs compared to good sleepers. Look at this. Almost in even more than double absenteeism compared to those who have good sleep. Memory loss consolidation. Oh, forgot. Where is my, uh, even the thing that you forgot, you forgot the name as well. You bumped, you bumped. Forgot. Okay. Serious accidents over a 12 month period. Persons with chronic insomnia have this. Persons with high psychiatric distress is here, and person without chronic insomnia or high distress is just here. It's like four, five, six times higher with chronic insomnia. In fact, it's higher with those with high psych distress. It used to be that they 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 were regarding insomnia as a mere symptom, but now it is really a disease. Look at this the consequence of insomnia, car accidents. Do you know? According to Mark Mahol, Mahol, fall asleep car crashes number in excess of one hundred thousand per year in the United States, resulting in at least 1,500 deaths. For perspective, fall asleep crashes may kill more young Americans than alcohol-related crashes. A lot of people worry about alcohol, DUI, driving under the influence of alcohol. But did we even consider people driving with sleep deprivation. They have a much higher mortality than alcohol-related crashes. False in the elderly is one of the consequences mentioned. So there's a study of 34,163 nursing home residents, 76 world women, and aged 65 and older. 150 to 210 days of follow-up. The relationship between insomnia, hypnotic use, false, and hip fracture was examined in older people. The results, insomnia did predict future falls, 52% more likely. Hypnotic use did not predict false. Conclusion, in elderly nursing home residents, Insomnia, but not hypnotic use, is associated with a greater risk of subsequent falls. There's also the circular relationship between insomnia and psychiatric disorders. Insomniac, having psychiatric disorders, and having psychiatric disorders resulting in insomnia. Circular, circular. So one of the consequences Psychiatric disorder. Okay. Here is a diagram of sleep deprivation. The causes of sleep deprivation. Of course, we have the inflammatory cytokines, you know, that causes inflammation either along the blood vessel walls, causing hypertension, or precipitating into, or a risk of hypertension, or inflammation on the joints, causing pain of the joints or arthritis, inflammation along the bronchial walls, precipitating into difficulty of breathing, inflammatory cytokines. 
are increased with sleep deprivation. Here we have the systemic circulation in the whole system of the body. We have the lymphoid tissue as well that are affected with sleep deprivation. And with these inflammatory cytokines, the systemic circulation affected and the lymphoid tissue affected, what happens? There is decreased TH1 and increased TH2. We have decreased NK cell. What is this? Natural killer cells. And CD8 T cell function. These can cause increase of cancer incidence. What else? It affects our blood vessels. It also affects our blood. It affects our antibody forming cells. It affects our natural defense, our immunity. White blood cells. When this, these are depressed, then increased infection is noted. Oh, you see, people who sneeze a lot, who cough more often, who have frequent flu or whatever it is, well, maybe non-healing wounds is increased infection. You know, um, we might be so concerned about, oh, I hear people say, hindi ko magaling ang sugat mo. Diabetes ka, diabetes ka. Maybe it's true. But do you know, did we even ask that person, how's your sleep? Did we? Okay, the B-cell antibodies, they have decreased antibody production. The T-cell, these are our other soldiers in the body. So there's decreased antigen presentation. All of these cause inf increased infection. How about the inflammatory mediators? Uh, there's increased neural degeneration. What does it mean? Our nerves are not in proper condition and they are even damaged or destroyed. It also causes increased cardiovascular disease. Now, did we even ask ourselves how common is insomnia? As an earlier in my introduction, it's a very common cause, but really how common is it? Do you know that one in every three persons have insomnia? So if in your home, there are three people, one of those is insomnia. Or maybe there are six of you, two of those have insomnia. You know how frequent it is? is very common. And yet, it seems that we are not even giving attention to it. So, that is why we are giving emphasis to insomnia. This thing is very, very frequent. Solution, I say at 26, 3 and 4. For now, there's a lot more that we could talk. But I would want to just leave this as a thought for each one of you. It says here, you, referring to God, will keep him or her in perfect peace. No stress. Low cortisol, low inflammatory cytokines or substances, normal blood pressure, 
normal blood sugar, normal metabolism, you will keep in perfect peace. Who are these people that God will keep in perfect peace? There are those whose mind is stayed on you referring to God. Why? Because that person, that lady, that child, this girl, that boy, trusts in you, oh God. Trust in the Lord forever is the invitation to you who couldn't sleep. For in Yah, the Lord is everlasting strength. It is in Yah, the Lord, that there is assurance, there is comfort. There is joy, there is peace, and there is sweet, sweet peace that we could rest even in turmoil times, even in financial constraints, even in problems in the workplace, when there's so much challenges from the family or from our employment from the community that we toss in our bed. Oh, Isaiah says, you will be in perfect peace as long as you trust in them. Good day. Have a good one. Oh, there's a question here. Question. How many people could be insomniac in the crowd? How common is insomnia? You remember that? How common is insomnia? We just made mention of that. One in every three. And what are the effects of sleep deprivation or insomnia in our immune system? A question here says, I feel so fatigued all the time. And I have very low resistance. What could be the cause? Well, you, you said it. It's insomnia. The other question is, is it possible that our young people now can only Follow one instruction at a time because of insomnia. This question are two prongs. There's an observation that our young people currently can only one follow one instruction at a time. For example, oh Johnny, please go to the market. And then buy a red rice and also coconut oil. And what will the young people say? Or, or if they don't write, they come back with only one at most two items of the two, three, four, five that you've mentioned. Very low and short attention span. There's an observation, and yes, insomnia can cause that. What could be the cause of the insomnia in young people? You know that, yeah. 
use of the phones, yes, you're right. And then the final question that I will entertain for this time is, here's a question that said, hey, dog. I have a husband who snores. Can it be a cause of insomnia? Well, yes. Um, actually, there's another category. There's another category of sleep deprivation, which is apnea. If we said that insomnia is one in every three, apnea is one in every 30. And narcolepsy, that's just falling asleep even while talking, sitting down and person sleeps so quickly. That's one in every 3,000. Oh, there's a possible question. How about work shifts? It does affect. It does precipitate in one way or another sooner or later into insomnia. Because our body could hardly adjust. Especially if the work shift is too rapid, then the body is not given um, the chance to recuperate. Then yes, insomnia can take place. How will we solve this? Again, there's an administrative call. And I leave that to the administration of the workplace you're in. And maybe just ask the Lord, talk to him what you can do with the work shifts that you are subjected into. Let me share you this thing. The person whose mind is stayed in the Lord. You know, you know how we are taught to pray constantly or without ceasing? The person whose mind is stayed in the Lord is like Praying always has in their electrical circuits, in the electrical waves that they have, have deep or delta waves, even while praying. So that's one, huh? You have frequent. Work shifts, stay, stay your mind in the room. And the other thing that I like shared with you is whether you have quick shifting of work assignment and of work schedule. If we spend time doing physical activity, for every one hour of physical activity, you're able to gain another hour of the good effects that can offset sleep deprivation. Of course, eating well, getting nourished, stress management, getting connected with people, be happy with them, and just keeping our mind in an all value principles, keeping our mind in good things, and keeping our mind in the Lord is the solution to all of our sleep deprivation, especially in some Blessings, everybody. Have a good, good sleep and rest comfortably in the Lord. Blessings.
Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Solihon, for that very informative nga topic and discussion nga ging hatag sa aton subong nga aga, no? Very um, timely para sa aton mga workers and viewers, siguro, no? Nga naga day shift or night shift, nga gakaguba ba lang ila sleep, sleep pattern. So, may possibility gin nga gakadevelop siya, sila sang insomnia. And thank you so much as well, Dr. Solihon, for answering those questions especially do mga questions nga nang common man sa aton mga family member no nga mga naga snore or naga huragok so hindi gali na siya nga do ka normal lang no sometimes it can be one of the reason nga basi maka develop ka sang insomnia hindi ta katulog mayo and and mas mayo gid gihapon mga kapaglaom nga magpa-check kita and then i-monitor ang aton nga nga mga nga kaugalingon nga health no and i would like to share no uh, one of uh, one of the writings ni Ellen White no gambagid siya diri nga do not turn day into night so medyo budline ni siya para sa mga uh, nurses naton nga naga shifting but then hambal niya sa aton is health is a, is a great treasure so as much as possible matulog kita sa sakto nga oras para hindi kita maiwasan tanang mga insomnia nga aton mga mga gakabat syagan or gaka experience it is the richest possession mortals can have wealth honor or learning is dearly purchased if it it be at the loss of the vigor of health so haba guys sim simply lang but uh, health is wealth sa mga paglaom and hindi tapag take for granted ang aton nga sleep no um hindi tapag it turn ang day into night and night into day um, hopefully, no. So, hindi man na siya hapos para sa iba natin nga worker, but I hope nga kung may mga symptoms ka mo or mga nabalanta man ng mga consequences ng insomnia, so let us try to improve our sleep, mga kapaglaon. So, once again, thank you so much, Dr. Solihon, for your time. I know nga very busy, good, no, si Dr. Solihon, but then um, nag-take time siya to share the message about health and about this our topic in Samia. So mga kapaglaom, salamat man sa pag-tune in sa aton subong nga aga. And before kita maga-close, gina-invite gina ko anay kamutanan sa pagluko sa inyo ulo para sa aton nga closing prayer. Okay, let's, let us pray. Our great God, Father in heaven, we praise you and thank you, dear Father, for being with us this morning and for the rest of our program. Thank you, dear Father, for the presence of Dr. Solihon, for giving us the topic where we have been reminded to take good care of our body and to not be deprived of our sleep. Thank you, dear Father, for your love, for the blessings that you've bestowed upon us. And please bless us as we were going to continue our duties and responsibilities that you've entrusted unto us. Thank you, Father, for loving us just as we are, for hearing and answer our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, saliwat mga kapaglaom. Bantayan nyo kami. Um, Monday, Wednesday, sa GSA Channel 37 at Digital Receiver Channel 45. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, sa Facebook page, sa Adventist Medical Center Manila, Hope Channel North Philippines, Adventist Medical Center Bacolod, Hope Channel Bacolod. Kagsubong man sa AWR 360 Luzon area at DWBL 1242 kilohertz Teleradio, kada alas 12 tob tob alauna sang hapon. So, saliwat, madamo git nga salamat sa pag-upod sa aton subong nga aga. Ako ang inyo uh, host sa mga aga ko si Kapaglaong Richelle nga nag-remind sa inyo to please take good care of your body and mind because a happy body and a healthy mind is a sign of a healthy lifestyle. Magkilit anay kita sa dasun nga Wednesday, there is a Hope Channel Bacolod ini ang The Voice of Health, trumpeting heaven's prescription that lifestyle is medicine. L. Laughter is medicine. The stress reliever. Is laughter really the best medicine? Laughter is an emotional and physiological response to humor with psychological benefits and healing effect to the body. Genuine or spontaneous laughter are associated with positive emotions or feelings and produce better mood. Laughter decreases blood pressure, reduces anxiety and negative emotions, boosts immune system, 
promotes healing process and recovery time among patients. He will yet fill your mouth with laughing and your lips with rejoicing. Job chapter 8 verse 21. Laugh more, frown less. Interaction is medicine. The friendly immune booster. What is life without interacting? No man is an island. Each individual is interconnected with one another. Interaction improves mental health. Boosts the immune system promotes physical health, strengthens family ties and social relationship, reduces mortality risk. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Ecclesiastes 4 verses 9 to 10 Understand more, argue less. F. Food and fluid is medicine. The taste of health and the thirst quencher. How long can you live with nothing to eat or drink? Several studies provide sufficient evidence. Plant-based nutrition involves eating fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, and legumes. These kinds of food lowers your risk of heart disease, reduces risk of hypertension, helps in prevention or management of diabetes, prevents obesity and other chronic diseases. Water is among the basic needs for survival of humans, animals, and plants. About two-thirds or 60 to 70 percent of human weight accounts to water. Every cell, tissue, and organ of the body depends on water to work properly. Flushes out the toxins and waste. Regulates normal body temperature supports skin health, facilitates good digestion, provides protection for brain and spinal cord from shocks. Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 Nourish more, abuse less. Exercise is medicine, the preserving power of motion. How are you keeping yourself active and fit? Sitting is the new smoking. Inactivity is a silent killer. We can overcome this sedentary behavior through exercise. Reduces risk of developing chronic diseases such as diabetes heart disease, colon and breast cancer, boosts energy, self-confidence and mood, improves mental health, lowers risk of depression and anxiety, lowers risk of falls for adults. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength. Proverbs 24 verse 5 Move more, sit less. F. 
S. Sleep is medicine, the body restorer. Are you getting enough rest? Sleep is important to achieve overall well-being. It enables the body to repair itself from damages, restore health, and regain energy for tomorrow's activities. Sleep improves immune function, enhances emotions and social interactions, restores energy, repairs and regenerates cells. Come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 Rest more, worry less. Temperance is medicine, the key to balance life. Do you practice moderation and self-control? Everything in life requires balance. Moderation is key even in good things. Temperance improves immune system prevents obesity or weight gain, prevents lifestyle diseases such as heart disease, stroke, and cancers. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 Balance more, indulge less. Why? Your faith is medicine, the divine healer. How is your spiritual health? Spiritual health is tied to wellness. People who are facing serious health issues tend to do better if they have a strong spiritual connection. Your faith gives peace of mind, brings happiness, reduces risk of depression, provides moral support, improves life satisfaction. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 Trust more, fear less. Light is medicine, the energy giver. Are you getting enough sunlight? Moderate amounts of sunlight offer great benefits, from providing warmth, lifting people's spirits, to giving one a feeling of well-being. Light lowers cholesterol regulates calcium levels and to prevent rickets and osteoporosis, regulates body clock and sleep cycles, prevents seasonal depression or seasonal affective disorder, stimulates appetite, and God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Genesis chapter 1 verse 4 Expose more, hide less. E. Environment is medicine, 
the lifesaver. Does your surroundings make you stressed or relaxed? We save the earth when we live a healthy lifestyle. Pure air, clean water, plant-based diet, and greener community build and support the life of everyone. Nurtures an environment that preserves resources for the next generation, reduces stress level, enhances brain function, promotes healthier lifestyle, improves work productivity. Then God saw everything that He had made, and indeed, it was very good. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and keep it. Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 and chapter 2 verse 15. Preserve more, pollute less. Thank you.